The world we live in focused itself on a lot of items since the beginning of citizen-centered free trades. Transportation was one of the first main focuses in the late 19th century, and household appliances like dishwashers or washing machines were another main focus in the mid-20th century. And with all these evolving technology and consumer orientation, now it's the time to combine every single one of them and create a smart city. The, the term smart city is used to define a city's ability to respond as efficiently as possible to the needs of citizens. Since the population growth is so high, the problem it leads to, such as traffic, security concerns, and lack of nutrition products, has also increased the necessity of controlling daily life to make citizens' lives easier. As said in the Forbes article, smart cities bring together infrastructure and technology to improve the quality of life of citizens and enhance their interactions with the urban environment. Smart cities rely on data. And now, our new focus is data. First of all, how do we even define technology? Well, in my own opinion, technology is an area of concrete concepts that evolve through knowledge. So whenever knowledge was used, there occurred development in a technological area. A smart man-made concept has to have some main features, such as, such as perception and reason. And the way these smart cities imitate perception is through human data. Our mobile phones, laptops, and tablets are all connected to a network such as the Internet of Things. And through these computers, it is easy for another machine connected to this network to gain our information, our data. And so can the machine perceive what we sense. If more than one person, in this case, cell phones, stop for a specific time at a specific junction, smart city computer can analyze the human traffic in this specific location and then provide a better, smoother traffic experience to the citizens. In order for this mass data analysis to happen, the computer must compute and act fast. There comes the term natural sciences into play. A normal personal computer cannot render this much of a big data. Therefore, a supercomputer or a server system is needed, which requires more development in computer science. However, it is not only dependent on computer science, it's also dependent on some other sciences, like biological science. For example, if someone were to have a heart attack, their smartwatch could detect the abnormality on the pulse and then connect to the emergency services, and then an ambulance could easily locate the patient and track their vital status. When the usage of such variables become obligatory, it will be also easier for the police to track down who uses illegal drugs if the technology was developed in that way. And again, if the technology was developed in that way, it will be like the crime rate would also reduce because of the advanced tracking abilities of these smartwatches. Tracking human traffic via cell phones, automating road limbs, street limbs, and electronic billboards, and such concepts that consume electricity, water, and such limited resources would also help save the environment. And there's just one area of knowledge that includes all these technologies, that's natural sciences. With the data rendering, there would be a great risk of manipulation or propaganda going on, since governments, and not only them, also the companies, can track our data flow through the internet, it will be easier for politicians to make propaganda advertisements on the spot. They would hit it on bullseye with real-time analyses of voters and give them directly what they want to see. And companies like Google or Apple could also manipulate us by showing a specific group a specific advertisement through their advanced algorithms, which combines natural sciences and human sciences. In all these manipulations, emotions could also be used. With the new face tracking features on our smartphones, these companies could analyze our facial expressions to Instagram posts and tweets and then advertise their products with, again, a direct hit on the bullseye with, uh, and then on the customer base, basically. Yeah. Capitalism could benefit so much on these new technologies and the cities would be full of them. People could try and perhaps fool the system by looking pleased and happy every single time. But that will only result in a corrupted society where everything looks so utopic, but everything is in a complete chaos, just like it was in the novel 1984. So whether smart cities are good or bad is highly dependent on its usage, and thus a lot of communities in the world aren't yet ready for it. As the technology develops, we have fewer secrets to hide from the governments. And as said in the sitcom, Malcolm in the Middle, the future is now, old man. And thus, and thus, 
Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, and thus, a smart city concept where we have to be extra careful with the human rights while rendering human data is near, and either us or this new technology should adapt to this new culture it's going to bring. The advantages and disadvantages show us that a futuristic smart city concept cannot be a complete utopia or a dystopia. However, the problems will change according to the new developments in, in smart technologies. The knowledge and the act of knowing would have to change too. So we all should always improvise, adapt, and overcome. Thank you. <laughs>